Assalamu alaikum, brothers. How do you deal with disrespect? This is a very important question because if there's anything a person will spend their entire life dealing with, it's disrespect. You often hear people say that women are emotional and men are logical, but when it comes to dealing with disrespect, individuals can throw all logic out the window. This phenomenon is often observed in a variety of situations. For example, a minor incident in traffic can escalate to the point where individuals engage in conflict as if there's no tomorrow. The global reality is disturbing. Numerous individuals find themselves locked in prison cells, never to taste freedom again. This fate often results from a misguided response to disrespect in a single moment. It's easy to pass judgment on these individuals, but sooner or later everyone faces their own trials. Someone may say words to you or your loved ones that trigger intense emotions that may lead to regrettable actions. Islamic teachings offer a solution to this problem. In this video, we will explore eight Islamic principles for dealing with disrespect. Be sure to watch to the end as the last one may be the most important. Number 1. Be patient. The strong is not the one who overcomes the people by his strength, but the strong is the one who controls himself while in anger. If someone disrespects or insults you, it is important to exercise patience and not seek revenge. It's tempting to let your anger get the better of you and seek revenge, but this is dangerous because lashing out aggressively, even if the urge feels justified, will usually make things worse in the long run. Instead, one must remain calm, take a deep breath, and separate one's emotions from the situation. In doing so, a person gains a broader perspective, much like observing pieces on a chessboard. This brings clarity and the realization that 9 out of 10 times the situation is not even worth reacting to. After all, it's not the disrespectful act itself that causes harm. Disrespect is not inherently hurtful or offensive. Rather, it is our own interpretations and thoughts about the disrespect that cause feelings of hurt or anger. Number 2. Listen. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak good or remain silent. When confronted with disrespect, active listening becomes imperative. Remember that the person's behavior reflects his or her own thoughts and opinions, not a divine judgment of your true worth. Their negative opinion is meaningless. This shift in perspective can help you maintain your inner calm. It helps you to make a more rational response, if a response is needed at all. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to tolerate or accept disrespect. What I'm saying is that you should handle it with self-control and dignity. Following the teachings of our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. By remaining calm, a person demonstrates resilience against being easily swayed by external events. Number 3. Establish Boundaries The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, while there is good in both. Islam does not advocate passivity or being a doormat. If someone disrespects you, you don't have to take it in silence, nor should you respond with uncontrolled anger. Instead, individuals are encouraged to be both calm and assertive. Set clear boundaries that protect your dignity. And if someone crosses those boundaries, communicate what was done wrong and how you expect to be treated. Maintaining strong eye contact during this communication reinforces the message that you will not play around with your boundaries. Don't look down or break eye contact like a chicken. It lets others know that you expect to be treated with respect, regardless of the circumstances. Number 4. Self-Reflect He who does not have mercy upon others, Allah will not have mercy upon him. Most people like to point the finger at others. According to them, it's always someone else's fault and they have never done anything wrong. Islam encourages self-reflection and honesty with oneself. Ask yourself questions like, is there any truth in what this person said or did? Did I say or do something that caused this situation to happen? You may conclude that you've made a mistake yourself. In such cases, a humble apology may be the appropriate response. Always self-reflect. It will help you gain a better understanding of the event and your own role in it. Number 5. Consider the origin. Do not be people without minds of your own, saying that if others treat you well, you will treat them well, and that if they do wrong, you will do wrong. Instead, accustom yourselves to do good if people do good, and not to do wrong if they do evil. 
when confronted with insults or demeaning behavior, pause to reflect before you react. Is their behavior a reflection of their own pain, insecurity, or ignorance, rather than an accurate judgment of you? As the famous quote states, he who takes offense when no offense is intended is a fool, but he who takes offense when offense is intended is also a fool. The wise man ignores offense, what people attack in you is often a reflection of what they attack in themselves. So let it roll off your back and have some compassion. Number six, acceptance. Strange is the affair of the believer. Verily, all his affairs are good for him. If something pleasing befalls him, he thanks, and it becomes better for him. And if something harmful befalls him, he is patient, and it becomes better for him. And this is only for the believer. No matter who you are, you'll face disrespect in your life. From the time you're a child to the time you're an old man. No matter how kind or strong you are, we all face disrespect in life, and there's no escaping it. Islam encourages acceptance of this reality and focuses on what the individual can control. How one responds to disrespect is where true power lies. While you cannot control how others treat you, you can choose how you respond to disrespect. By adopting this principle, you don't passively tolerate disrespect, you actively choose not to be affected by it. This frees you from the unnecessary burden of anger and resentment. You're focusing on what's important and channeling your energy into areas where you can make a difference. Life's challenges, including disrespect, are not insurmountable obstacles. They are opportunities for personal growth and self-mastery. Number 7. Use Humor Give me advice. He said, do not get angry. The man asked repeatedly and the prophet replied, do not get angry. Using humor to respond to disrespect is a subtle but powerful art. It's a highly underrated way to diffuse tense situations. Imagine you're being disrespected and instead of reacting angrily or defensively, you respond with a funny and clever joke. This touch of humor shifts the energy of the interaction, and you'll often see the person who disrespected you start to feel uncomfortable because your easygoing nature makes it clear that you have no ill intentions. The point of using humor is not to belittle or dismiss disrespect, but to diffuse tension and promote respectful and productive interactions. You're choosing to rise above the negativity and create a more positive atmosphere, even in the face of disrespect. This approach demonstrates emotional intelligence and self-control. Number 8. Forgive The example of a believer to other believers is like the bricks of a wall enforcing each other. Islam encourages forgiveness as an act of self-care and personal growth. Holding on to resentment is similar to being chained, which limits you more than anyone else. Listen to the disrespecting person to gain a better understanding of their concerns and issues. Instead of reacting defensively or shutting them out, try to be an active listener. Respond with curiosity and compassion. By doing so, you'll show that you want to see the bigger picture. Active listening allows you to peel back the layers of disrespect and see the underlying issues. If you can do this, you'll sometimes find problems you wouldn't have found otherwise. Although not always easy, forgiveness involves choosing to let go of negative emotions. It is the key to inner peace and happiness. It does not mean forgetting what happened, but it does involve a conscious decision to release emotions that do more harm than good. Remember that sometimes a person may have a good reason to be upset, but their emotions can get in the way of their delivery. Forgiveness, done with wisdom, compassion, and justice is presented as the ultimate act of strength and victory. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum.